Welcome everyone to Online Worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this Epiphany Sunday and celebration of Holy Communion for all people. I am Reverend Meredith Manning Brown, our lead pastor at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. And on behalf of Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, our staff, and all the people helping to lead worship today, we welcome you. We're so excited that you're joining with us on this special Sunday. It is communion for all people, so this means that you're need, going to need to have some bread or baked good or juice and beverage with you uh, in order to celebrate Holy Communion. So if you have not done so, I want to encourage you to gather those supplies up as we continue on in worship today. I also want to encourage everyone to fill out the contact form, particularly if this is your first time to join with us in online worship. Fill out that contact form. There's a place there for your information. There's also a place there for prayer requests that go to our pastors and to our prayer team. This is a wonderful way that we can be in contact with you, that we can be a part of your life, that we can connect with you and uh, invite you and encourage you more in worship and small groups and in studies and in service and all of those things. So please fill out that contact form. 
Now, when we do gather together here for online worship, we're not just watching a video, we're worshiping together. And so we promise to participate and to be a blessing. This, our promise to participate means that we're gonna go ahead and participate. I encourage you to close off other devices and really concentrate in on what we're doing. Maybe light a candle to help you focus and then do what it is that we're doing. When it's time to sing, stand up and sing. When it's time to pray, pray. When we're doing communion, go ahead and have that bread and juice with you and join with us all of those things so that we fully participate and then we promise to be a blessing in the way that we are in the comment section together the way that we're with the people in our households with the community and everything that all that we do together today is a blessing to everyone participating and to our community at large now one of the other things of course that we do together when we gather for online worship is share the love and peace of Jesus Christ with one another. I encourage you to do that now. You can do it in the comment section. You can type in there, peace be with you, and people respond, and also with you. You can share the peace with people in your household. Share the peace with me. And we're gonna be led in this by some very special folks of our Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church family. Peace be with you. Hi, my name is Sue Greenfield. I'm the Nurture and Outreach Chair and this is Patience, my granddaughter, and she's a member of the Jam Choir. Peace be, be with, with you. you. And, and also with you. Hi, we're the Cloud family. I'm Grant. I'm Marie. I'm Macy. I'm Paisley. Peace be, be with, with you. you. And also with you. Hi, I'm Megan Murray, and I am the lead designer at Wouldn't It Be Lovely here at DAUMC. And peace be with you. Good morning. My name is Reverend Margaret Ann Jessup, and I am the executive director and pastor of Wouldn't It Be Lovely, and I am in covenant with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I would like to start with our opening prayer. 
God of starlight, disperse the darkness of our lives that we may behold the light of your shining in every corner of our world. When we would rather not make spiritual journeys of our own, help us to put our metaphorical walking shoes and get going on the way. Guide our footsteps in your ways and justice may flourish and peace may abound that we may be the light and help of all those in need. Help us follow along with the Magi of old that through our journeys of faith, we may also see and act through your love made real in Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Please join us in singing Angels from the Realms of Glory. We have gone to Douglas for the past 10 years. I am also the founder and executive director of Compass, and we are both in the Young Adult Sunday School class, and I'm also a member of the Staff Parish Relations Committee. Um, I'm about to tell you about my favorite Christmas decoration, which is my Advent calendar. This was made by my mother when my sister and I were little kids. And so I have fond memories of it from my entire life. Um, it's very similar to the one that Joy Brown had already shared with us. And since it's after Christmas, all of the ornaments are already on the tree. But starting with December 1st, each of these ornaments is in the pockets. And every day I pick an ornament and put it on the tree. Um, and my sister and I would always take turns. We would alternate days. And I think there was a little bit of sibling rivalry. Um, what was hard is that when we both grew up, we both wanted this for, for our households. Um, and so actually just a couple years ago, my mom made another one. So my sister has the original. I have the more recent copy, um, but my mom was nice enough to personalize it to me a little bit so you can see the pink star and she made um since pink is my favorite color she did a lot of pink um, and there's also an eiffel tower on here somewhere um, so that is my favorite christmas decoration i love having it to look forward to every single day throughout the advent season it helps me anticipate christmas you know what time it is. It's time for small talk. I want to encourage all the kids who are with us today to come in close to your devices and your screens so you can see everything that goes on with small talk. This special time is led by Miss Laurie, our Director of Children and Youth Ministries, and her assistant, Laud the Lamb. So come on in close for small talk. Um, not Luna, Wad, why is the door open? The, oh, you're looking out the telescope. 
There's three wise men. I have a sheep looking out of a telescope. Three wise men. Open door, middle of winter. You're trying to help the wise men. Oh, to find the star. So they can find, they can find Jesus. Oh, well that's really very sweet. Don't you think so everybody? Good morning. This is Miss Lori and, and Laud, and we've got our three wise men here. And I guess Laud is trying to help them find the star so that they can find Jesus. Are you pretending? Okay, well, you kind of are pretending because here's the thing, Laud and Wise Ben and Luna over there, Jesus isn't there right now. We celebrated his birth and we're talking about the three magi who went to visit him and they followed the star. They didn't have a telescope and they didn't have a map. That would have been helpful, wouldn't it? Directions? Yeah. They didn't have those things. They followed this great star, which was amazing. It's worth remembering that today. But Jesus was, has already been born, and we're celebrating that. And we're going to continue celebrating that here into January. But our three wise men came bringing gifts because Jesus was so important. And they were bringing... Law, do you remember what they were bringing? Yeah, they were bringing them. They were bringing gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Those don't mean a lot to us today other than the gold, but they were very, very important things back then, very valuable. And that's why they were bringing them to Jesus, because he was the new king that they were looking for. So remember that, that we have Jesus with us all the time. He's in our hearts and we celebrate him. And we're continuing to celebrate him here into January. So Laud, I appreciate your work with the telescope and the three wise men, but they could see the star without it. Yeah, bye guys. Good morning, my name's Nancy Gillespie. I'm a member of the Zephyr class, the Chancellor Choir, and also the Bell Choir. I'm here today to share with you our reading from the Bible, uh, Matthew chapter 2, verses 2 through 12. We will hear the story of the Magi coming to see the infant Jesus, and we will sing the verse of the first Noel along with it. Let us open our hearts to hear what God is saying to us through our Bible reading and song. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east and we've come to honor him.
King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and the legal experts and asked, asked them where the Christ was to be born. They said, in Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. You, Bethlehem, land of Judah, by no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me, so that I too may go and honor him. When they heard the king, they went and looked. The star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened the treasure chest and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. For many of us, the week between Christmas and New Year is kind of weird. It's uh, that little bit of in-between time. A lot of us are off of work, we're off on school holiday. This year, we've spent a lot of time catching up with friends through phone calls and video calls. It's been nice to have some time for renewing friendships, but I've noticed that there are two topics of conversation that keep coming up. The first is, what gifts did you get for Christmas? If you feel like sharing about that in the comment section, something you're really excited about that you got for Christmas, you just go right ahead and put it in there. It's fun to hear about friends' gifts, especially from the kids who will devolve into an extended show and tell session. Here's my new Lego, and uh, let me show you my new video game, or these are my new kitty socks. The second is, what gifts did you give for Christmas? If you feel like sharing about that in the comments, go right ahead and do that too if there's something really ex that you're excited about that you gave for Christmas this year. This might be a more interesting question for us, particularly uh, for many of us that are in worship today. Many of us have plenty of things and our friends and family have plenty of things too. What do you buy for someone who already has everything they need? Of course, the origin of gift giving at Christmas time is found in the example of the Magi, whom we often call the wise men or the three kings. Now, the first thing to pop up in your mind may be the cultural image taken from uh, this story that we tell. Three robed men on camel following a star which is right above the manger where Jesus is born, bringing three gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. 
which may uh, make you immediately want to burst into the song. We three kings of Orient are. Maybe. But the Bible tells a different kind of story, which Nancy shared with us today from Matthew chapter 2. Matthew's telling of the birth of Jesus has a unique strength and power of its own. That's why we don't just merge it into the story from Luke with its angel proclamations and mangers and shepherds and songs. For folks in our DAUMC family who were a part of our Advent study, Light of the World by Amy Jill Levine, we concentrated on these wonderful characters whom she describes as fools for Christ. I love that joyful and powerful description of the Magi. The Bible text doesn't actually call these characters kings. The Greek word in the text is Magi, M-A-G-I like the root word for magic. Various translations have used different words to try to describe them. Um, Wise men, kings, band of scholars. Most have shied away from using the term astrologers, which is probably the closest translation for magi. In Persia, where these visitors probably came from, magi were dream interpreters. By Jesus' time, the term magi referred to fortune tellers or stargazers, not wise men or kings, but more like astrologers or what we might call horoscope fanatics, looking at the stars for signs about life, the world, directions for how to behave and what to do. And we can tell from the Bible story that they were not particularly wise. When they show up at the palace in Jerusalem and ask King Herod, the current king of the Jews, where is the newborn king of the Jews? Denying Herod's kingship with one simple question. This is impolitic at best and grounds for execution at worst. So not wise men, but more like astrologers, magicians, or pseudoscientists whose practice was actually condemned by Jewish law. And they are the heroes in this story that the Gospel of Matthew tells us, that tells us about Jesus' birth. Here they are, these astrologers who spent their lives watching the movements of stars and interpreting meaning. They had seen a bright star rise, which in their practice told them of the birth of a great king. So the Magi traveled many miles to see the new king and finally find Jesus, Mary, and Joseph in their house in Bethlehem. Fools for Christ, indeed. Now, our tradition tells us there were three, hence the we three kings. And in some traditions, they are even given names. Caspar, Melchior, Balthazar. The Bible doesn't say how many magi there were, two or three, or maybe 23, but the Bible does say that the magi gave Jesus three gifts. Over the centuries, there has been lots of discussion about these gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, their worth, what they might symbolize, how they could be used by Jesus and his family. We do know that these gifts were common elements used in the Magi's magical practices and that they were valuable to them. What has really stuck with me, though, is the way the Magi bring these gifts. They saw Jesus with his mother, Mary, and they are overcome with joy. They fall to their knees, honoring and worshiping Jesus. Then they open up their treasure chests and they gave him gifts. They opened up their treasure chests and they gave to Jesus what they understood to be valuable. And who knows what all was carried in their treasure chests or what all could have been of value to them. It could have contained jewels or rich cloth or the charts of constellations. They were so moved by being with Jesus, the Son of God, that they offered these valuable possessions that they had with them, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then we learn that they changed course. They were warned in a dream to not return to Herod, so they don't. Their lives change, and they go back to their country by another way. 
here we are in online worship together in the culmination of Christmas and the beginning of a new year and the beginning of a new way. What the Magi do in the presence of Jesus really begs us to consider what will we offer Jesus in this new year of possibility, of continued pandemic, of hope for health and wholeness, of help for many who need it? Can we open up our treasure chests and offer to Jesus what is there? And what might that be for you? Your time, your money, your resources, your hopes and dreams for the new year, your passions for service that you've been holding back, your pride, a long-held grudge, a sin or addiction you've been unwilling to let go of, a hardened heart that you've been unwilling to give away. The Magi did more than just open up their treasure chests and give gifts. They opened their hearts to Jesus and they gave themselves and they were changed. And this is a good day for us to do the same. As we begin this new year, as we share in communion with Jesus and with people near and far, this is a good day to open your heart to God. Right now, during our prayer, you can do just that. Please join with me in prayer. Lord Jesus, we are so thankful for your life and the celebrations we have shared in this season. Like the Magi, we are on a journey to see you, honor you, and worship you with all that we are. We offer our gifts to you right now, our treasures, our possessions, our hopes and dreams, our grudges, our brokenness, our passions, all of the gifts that we are and will become. Receive us as we begin this year anew and transform all we offer into an abundance of love, justice, and peace for you and your world. Amen. Join us as we sing Love Came Down at Christmas. As we are giving thanks for the great gift of Jesus Christ in our lives and are giving ourselves back to Jesus with all that we are and all that we have, we want to encourage you to give your gifts into the ministries here of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Your financial gifts are making all of the difference in the way we're able to be together in online worship, with small groups, with service throughout our community, all the ways that we are able to reach out with help and hope and love into our hurting world. Your financial gifts to make that a reality, and we thank you for the way that you have been giving. You can give into the ministries of Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church by using our online giving portal. That link is right in the comment section, and it is available through our webpage as well. You can also give your gifts by setting up automatic withdrawals with your financial institution or with ours. Just give us a call in the church office if you need help with that. And of course, you can send in your checks to Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. Thank you, thank you for your generous giving during this season and continuing on into our new year. It's time for Holy Communion for all people. Uh, we hope that you've got your bread, your baked good, your juice, your beverage. Uh, get those close into you so that we can pray and celebrate and share this holy meal together. This is Holy Communion for a Sunday of gifts, 
stars, continuing celebrations, journeys, and a new year. In the old song, The 12 Days of Christmas, today is the ninth day, the day when the gift is nine people dancing. So come to this table of grace, Jesus's table for everyone, and especially for you, whoever you are and wherever you are with all that you are. With one star for following. With two gifts, bread and cup for sharing. With three days of the new year. Knowing there are at least four fellow seekers joining with you. With way more than five hopes in our world. Come to this table even if you want to be laying everything down because you are so weary of being fearful, isolated, or essential to everyone but you. Come to this table if you are swimming in Zoom, online school, financial risk, or grief. Come to this table if you've milked all the joy from Christmas, enough to carry you into 2021, or not nearly enough. Come to this table if you are dancing or if you have stopped dancing, even though you are carrying many gifts or you need to be healed by watching for Christ's dance in and through our world. Please pray with us. At this your table, loving God, which we share in many places and in many times, we remember and thank you for this new year, continuing with pandemic, but filled with hope that it will be ending. We thank you and remember the journey of the Magi, guided by a star, bringing gifts. And we remember all the oases where they rested along the way and the people they probably met and shared food and conversation with. We thank you with all that we are as we remember Jesus, born to change everything, who grew up to help people in their hurting and loss, healing people, teaching challenging destructive powers, dying for us, rising for us, making your love for all the world really real. Holy God, we remember how Jesus gathered the friends with whom he had traveled through life for a final meal that he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We remember how he took the cup, blessed it and gave it to them saying, take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this and remember me. And I invite everyone to lift up your hands as we pray for the Holy Spirit. Uh, put them over your bread and your cup. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered in many places and in many times. And pour out your Holy Spirit on the gifts of bread and cup that each of us has brought. Make all of these gifts of bread and cup be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may become one with Christ who was born, lived, died, and rose to bring healing to a broken world. You can put your hands down. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until we feast together at the heavenly banquet in your eternal realm. For all honor and glory are yours, eternal God, now and forever. Amen. With the confidence of God's precious children, let us gather up our concerns and joys, offering them now in a few moments of silence or in the comments. And now praying together as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The bread and juice, the baked goods and beverage that we eat are a tangible experience of Jesus's transforming grace and love, feeding us, healing us, and changing us from the inside out.
I invite you to pick up your piece of bread. Eat and experience that this is Jesus's love for you. And now pick up your cup. Drink and experience that this is Jesus's love for you. Please join with me in prayer. Loving God, thank you for feeding us at your table of your healing and grace. Let this meal fill us that we never lose sight of your shining star or ignore a new year embedded in each new day or forget the invitation of Christ to dance, to sing and live out his love and justice with joy and thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Please join us in singing Star Child. Thank you so much for joining with this online worship with Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church on this special Sunday of Epiphany and Gifts. We are so glad that you've joined with us. We hope that if you have not already done so, that you'll fill out the contact form so that we can uh, be in relationship with you, get in touch with you. Remember, there's a place there for you to put your prayer requests that go right to our pastors and to our prayer team. We love you. And of course, we miss getting to see you in person, but we are grateful that we have these ways online to be able to worship and connect, to do small group together, to be in service together. So please join with us. Um, we uh, love to be on this journey of faith with you. Uh, Margaret Ann and I would like for you to receive this benediction now that is from the wonderful work of uh, Howard Thurman from The Mood of Christmas and Other Celebrations. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back in their flock, the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, 
to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers and sisters, to make music in the heart. Go now to find, feed, release, rebuild, bring peace, and create in Christ's name. Amen.